I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. This is 40 at 40. Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. wouldn't want to talk me into an encore, would you? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, distinguished members of the Congress, honored guests and fellow citizens, I have no words to express my appreciation for that, that greeting. I've... I have come to speak to you tonight about our economic recovery program and why I believe it's essential that the Congress approve this package, which I believe will lift the crushing burden of inflation off of our citizens and restore the vitality to our economy and our industrial machine. First, however, and due to events of the past few weeks, will you permit me to digress for a moment from the all-important subject of why we must bring government spending under control and reduce tax rates, I'd like to say a few words directly to all of you and to those who are watching and listening tonight, because this is the only way I know to express to all of you on behalf of Nancy and myself our appreciation for your messages, your flowers, and most of all, your prayers not only for me, but for those others who fell beside me. The warmth of your words, the expression of friendship, and yes, love, meant more to us than you can ever know. You have given us a memory that we'll treasure forever. And you have provided, provided an answer to those few voices that were raised saying that what happened was evidence that ours is a sick society. The society we heard from is made up of millions of compassionate Americans and their children from college age to kindergarten. As a matter of fact, as evidence of that, I have a letter with me. The letter came from Peter Sweeney. He's in the second grade in the Riverside School in Rockville Center. And he said, I hope you get well quick or you might have to make a speech in your pajamas. <laughs> He added a postscript. P.S. If you have to make a speech in your pajamas, I warned you. <laughs> oh. Well, six societies don't produce men like the two who recently returned from outer space. Six societies don't produce young men like Secret Service agent Tim McCarthy, who placed his body... placed his body between mine and the man with the gun simply because he felt that's what his duty called for him to do. Six societies don't produce dedicated police officers like Tom Delahanty. <laughs> or able and devoted public servants like Jim Brady. Six societies don't make people like us so proud to be Americans and so very proud 
of our fellow citizens.